Professor Messerly, how do you treat uh, nowadays, nowadays a hypertension patient? That's a good question. I think once you have recognized hypertension, you should at least consider some non-pharmacologic measures. Consider, I say. I would be a bit reluctant in a patient who has established hypertension to only do non-pharmacologic measures. I therefore usually do start drug treatment right away, but do tell the patient, please go on a low-salt diet, please lose weight, exercise, etc. And if then, in six months later or so, the blood pressure is low, I can always consider stopping the medication. And I think that helps the patient a great deal. So the question comes up then thereafter, how do you start? Now, in the United States, the guidelines still state you should start with a diuretic. Personally, I find that's a lot of nonsense. There's absolute nonsense to start with a diuretic unless there is a distinct indication. I'm not saying you should not use diuretics. For example? For instance, if a patient has some low-grade edema, right, then that may be a good idea to, to, to start with a diuretic. Or if the patient is elderly, cannot afford any other medicine, that's another consideration where you possibly can start the diuretic. But to my way of thinking, usually it's either a blocker of the renal angiotensin system or a calcium antagonist. And most often you have to combine the two anyhow. So it doesn't matter that much whether you start on one and add the other or vice versa. So it doesn't uh, matter whether you start with a monotherapy or right away with a combination? Well, I'm a bit reluctant to always start with a fixed combination or so. And the reason for being reluctant is actually very simple. Um, you have to consider that a patient who is 85, and even if the blood pressure is 190 over 80 or so, I would start on monotherapy first, and then after a few weeks, add a second agent. However, if the patient is 45, has a relatively healthy cardiovascular system, blood pressure is 160 over 110, you know you will need at least two drugs. You can as well start on a combination. That is, it, most often, a calcium antagonist, a RAS blocker combination. Well, there are a lot of combinations, so how to find out which combination suits the patient? Well, there are two considerations. One, obviously, is the ingredients of the combination. And the second is outcome data. You, wanna, you don't want only to lower blood pressure, you want to reduce heart attack and stroke. That's extremely important. So therefore, um, you look at drug classes that are actually beneficial in this regard. So, for instance, amlodipine has been extensively documented to reduce heart attacks, stroke, death, etc. It's one of the best drugs in hypertension that we have at the present time. And when you look at the, at the um, accomplished study, then uh, we know that amlodipine is considerably better than a thiazide, it reduces morbidity and mortality by 20% more, despite the fact that blood pressure was lowered to the same extent. This means very much that diuretics now are usually third-line treatment. And how about the uh, sartanes? Yeah, I mean, there is there's no question that, you know, um, I use the ARBs, we call them ARBs and not the sartans. I know the sartans is in Switzerland. We call them the ARBs, the angiotensin receptor blockers. I use them extensively because they are very well tolerated. They lower blood pressure well, and there are practically no adverse event to speak of. So most patients tolerate them extremely well. And we know there are several fixed combinations with ARBs and amlodipine available at the present time. Okay, so you have a take-home message for our uh, house doctors? I think the take-home message is don't be reluctant to treat. And if you decide to treat, make sure that the blood pressure gets to go relatively fast. Don't forget the non-pharmacologic measures, but 
do not use them first and drug therapy second. Use that concomitantly at the same time. One more question. How many of your patients really can reduce blood pressure just with uh, conservative uh, non-medicament measures? The main problem of non-pharmacologic therapy is compliance. It's very, very tough for the patient to stay on a low-salt diet, to continue to exercise, to keep the weight down. So to my way of thinking, this is a minority, I would say 5%, something like that. And even then, you know, you might be able to postpone drug treatment for a few years, but probably not more than that. Than that hypertension will catch up with you, you ultimately will need pharmacologic therapy. Thank you very much, Professor Messerly. Thank you.